Hello again and welcome to episode 2 of the of the General Life Podcast. So today we're going to talk about uh, wage slavery. So what is wage slavery? So according to Wikipedia, wage slavery is a situation in which a person's livelihood depends on wages or a salary, especially when the dependence is total and immediate. So that's what wage slavery means in Wikipedia. But what does it mean in, let's say... What does it really mean? I mean, if you read all that, it's just all words, but what does it mean to be a wage slave? You know, um, in order to explain what a real, what, what really a wage slave is, we have to define what a slave is. I mean, I mean if we go back into history, we sh- if you go back into history, you should know that um, there were slaves back then. You know, they were physically chained up and the slaves, they had owners. That people actually owned slaves, slaves just f- only a few hundred years ago. You know? But um, back then, the slaves were chained up. They knew they were slaves, man. You know, people, humans, we are we are visual creatures. Just because you, um, just because the people who don't know better, you know, let's say you, um capture someone in the jungle or something and you, you train you chain them up they they know that they are slaves you know humans are, are visual creatures if, if you slap some chains on on their wrist and on their ankles man, there's no bullshitting it they are slaves they they have been captured and and their lives are no longer their own you know and these slaves when when when, when when they were in the serv- servitude of of their masters, man, they were doing some dirty ass shit. They were doing some some of the dirtiest and the most terrible jobs known to man. I mean, even right now, if you work in the coal mines, it's pretty bad, you know. Even to today's standards, I'm sure they pay you well today, but man, back then they were working pretty much for free. Um, yeah, coal mines, gold mines. Mineral mines, you know, freaking, freaking, you know, freaking coal factories, you name it. The dirtiest jobs, most likely the slaves have already done them. You know, they were they were actually doing them. Cotton cotton fields, you know, remember, remember the South, you know, American Civil War. You know, it, it was a, a fight over slavery. You know, but uh, but thanks to but thanks to the advent of human rights, you know, the human rights movement and the abolishment of slavery due to being morally wrong i mean it is wrong to have slaves you know finally humanity has realized that it's actually pretty immoral to have you know to to hold someone at ransom you know it's it's just not ethical so in a way you can't have slaves anymore but hey it's not the end you know it's not the end you know people have found other ways to enslave you you know it's just a different way instead of putting chains on you they put chains metaphorically on your mind you know so they can ins- so pretty much there there is a new way of enslavement um you know this new way of enslavement is needed for the economic machine to continue and and through this this new way you're pretty much trading your your time for money through work you know although throughout history we humans had to work to get by i mean we've we've all been there you know you you do your nine to five job you know you you, you work, you have to work to make a living, you know, we all do, we all got bills to pay, we all got mortgages to pay, we've got, you know, f- food to put on our table, we have kids, kids to take care of, you know, we all need to work at some point, but we have been conditioned, you know, we have been conditioned and brainwashed into believing that we are free, you know, and, and really, we are bound by, by corporate lies, you know the corporation that you're working for. They tell you lies, they they misguide you, they give you fairy tales of of life for f- like life for fulfillment and purpose. So basically, they're telling you some nonsense about how work, by working for them you're f- you, like you have purpose and there's fulfillment. But most of you already know the company that you're working for. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a shit. They all they care about is is how much output 
how much input you can put in and how much output they can get out of you. So that's all that's all they care about. If, so if, if the company says that they actually care about you, no, they don't. At the end of the day, a company is there to make money, right? And, and you are there to make money for them, right? They are, you guys are trading your time for money. Because basically that's all you have. You know, that's all you have. And, and you can prove me wrong. You can prove me wrong. You, if you have something to offer besides your time, I mean, go out into the market. Let's see how valuable you are. Um, yeah, I mean, just give it a go. Try me. <laughs> just, just try me. So we are led to believe that 40-hour work weeks with shitty pay is normal and that over- overtime is a bonus. Now, that's, that's a real bummer for me. I mean, I mean these companies have actually, have actually convinced people that overtime is good. That overtime is good, you know. You work eight hours of your day, of your waking day, and then they ask you to ask you to do overtime. And most of the time, if you don't do overtime, uh, your leaders are not very happy with you. I'm like, why aren't you doing overtime? And then you answer them. You tell them, because I don't want to. Maybe I want to spend time with my family. I've already done my my, my obligated eight hours. Why do I need to do overtime? Right, and and they could easily say, "Oh yeah, well, oh, yeah, that, that that's understandable. You're right, you're right." Some some jackasses will actually question you. They'll actually say, "Well, what else are you gonna do at home?" It's like, "What what are you gonna do?" I'm like, "It's none of your business, bitch." Freaking, I've done my eight hours. Overtime is a bonus, right? Like you said. So if I choose not to do it, I won't do it. But we've been brainwashed so badly to the point where. Freaking, they make you think that overtime is actual bonus. It's like, it's, it's, it's as if um, bonus is, oh, you deserve a bonus. Here you go, do some overtime. I'm like, bitch, we gotta work that overtime. We, we gotta do that overtime to get our bonus. It's not as if you're just, you're, you're just handing it out, right? We get paid a time and a half or double time, you know, for, 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 the, overt- like for the overtime, but freaking, Let's face it, man. After eight hours, you're already tired. So even if you do overtime, you want you're not that productive anyway. You know, they're making you do overtime so that they don't have to call in anybody else to cover you, or or that uh, like they are falling behind. Mind you, most of the time, work when when, when you're falling behind on work, most of the time it's not your fault. It's just um, circumstances happen, and then it just falls out that way. But most of the time, it's not your fault. You know, and you have a right to not do overtime. But that's the thing. That's the trap. That's the trap right there. Because the trap is they fail to highlight the fact that their employees are struggling to make ends meet, and that overtime is needed to keep their heads above water. I mean, that's the tragedy of it all. You know, we have become slaves so bad to the point where, where you think forty hours in a week is enough. You know, it's not enough. Most of the time, it's not enough. Forty hours is just enough to freaking make sure that. You know, you, you you're make, you're barely making ends meet, and so you have to do overtime to keep your head above water, right? But let's face it, not all of us want to do overtime. If we do do overtime, see it for what it is. Overtime is not a bonus. Overtime is slavery. It's it's pretty much you doing extra work for your company, which does not benefit you in 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 any in any way. Because I've I mean I've done this for years. I've done this for oh, freaking every time overtime was offered. I took it. I mean, I was just a slave. I was a slave. I admit that. I was a salary slave. I was a, a wage slave. I mean, every overtime that I took, I mean, I took it all. But the problem is, the more you, the more you work, because we have a, a progressive tax system. So basically, the more you work, the more you get taxed. So in a way, man, we can, the tax man is, is going to take most of it. You know, the tax man will just take most of it. So in the end, it's not really that worth it if you think about it. And then. You, you drive home and you're really tired now. I'm thinking if you thought eight hours was was bad, imagine doing an extra two hours. Man, by ten, by by nine and a half hours, you're knackered. You're just tired to the days, and you gotta go home and make dinner too. Oh my god, yeah. So, so if you wanna freaking watch the like listen to the first episode, just go just go back into my YouTube channel and uh, and watch the first one. Just go to episode one, cog cog in a machine. You know where I break down. The part where you know I'll break down your day-to-day life. So yeah, just watch that. I digress. 
So anyways, but the flip side is that there are those who earn comfortable wages. Yep, there are people who, who are out there who are earning good money, man. They're earning very good money, but are unable to reduce their hours or they fear being fired for daring to ask for it. Now, this is fucking ridiculous. This is fucking ridiculous. The fact that you got to... You got to ask. You, 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 you ask. They, they actually give you permission to ask, you know, if you have any, if you have any grievances, if you have any any problems at all you like you're free to ask you know the, the corporation actually tells you this it's like if you have any problems just ask all right then how about uh, can i reduce my hours it's like if i don't have to be here why do why do i need to be here can i work at home and most of the time is no you can't i'm like why not what's the big deal why can't i work from home why do i need to be here it's like no you have to be here for what reason no, because we want you to be here. You know why they want you to be there? They want you to be there so that they can see you work. They don't want you to stay at home and fall behind. So basically, you have to come in to do the work in front of them. And if you argue with them, they can say, all right, then there's the door. And they have the right to do that. They have the right to fucking actually do that. And don't ask them, ask them to reduce your hours. Ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. All right? It ain't gonna happen. They want to milk you dry. They have you by the fucking balls. If you are on a salary, actually, is it a wage or a salary? The, like where they, they pay you regardless whether you take breaks or days off or not. I think that's a, that's a salary? Salary, salary. All right. That's a salary. So regardless, so if you're on a salary, basically, if you rock up to work every single day, you get paid the same. If you decide to take two days off, you get paid the same as well. But here's, here's the rub. You might think, oh, it's stable, you know. This is stable income. You know, this is this is stable. Fucking no matter what I do, I'll get paid the same every week. I can budget, blah, 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 blah. Ah, there lies the, there lies the lie. There lies the little lie that, that, that they don't tell you. All right, that's where the little lie is. And let me tell you what, the, what that fucking little lie is. That little lie is, do you really think a company is going to sign you up on a salary, on a fixed rate, and that you can go home after eight hours? No, 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 that ain't gonna happen. That's not how companies operate. Because mind you, if I run a company, I'll probably do the same thing. It's immoral, but I'll do. The, I'll probably do the same thing, right? I'll probably do, do it to the person that I hate. So, so if I hate you in the past and you work for me, I'll probably do this to you just to fuck your mind up a little bit. Just in the future, be careful. If I'm your boss, just know I'm gonna do this to you. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Anyways. I digress. So back to what I was saying. So, all right, they sign you up for, let's say the contract is $60,000 fixed. No matter what, in that one year, they will pay you $60,000, right? And it, regardless if you work 28 hours or 40 hours a week, regardless. But here's the rub. Do you really think they're going to make you work just, just that 40 hour work, like 40 hour work week? No, they are not. They are not. Just because you go home after eight hours does not mean that you can't bring work home. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you, they'll probably force you to freaking take work home. I'm like, motherfucker, I've already done my eight hours and now I've got to take work home too? Well, well, that's the thing. You know, um, you guys remember something called um, primary school and high school? Yeah, you remember back then when they make you do homework? Guess what? That system, that's the school system has programmed you to think it's normal to have homework. They think, you know, it, they programmed you to think that this is normal. So when you go into the workforce, mate, it's normal. It's normal. You have homework. You know, you already done your eight hours, and you got to go home if I can do homework too. But instead of school, school, the homework is due, let's say, in two days, three days. Freaking homework for your actual work, and they're paying you. It's probably due the next day. And you probably get homework every fucking day. Right? So you, so just because, you know, you, you, you finish with your eight hours does not mean that your work ends. You know? Sometimes you got to bring work home or you stay at work. You stay at work. And then you have 12-hour days. 12-hour days times up by five, that's 60 hours a week. Now, you can do that for probably a week, but you really think you can do that for the next 52 days? Like wait, like fifty two weeks, for, you know, for one year, two years, three years. Don't you reckon that will affect you in some negative way? You know, doing twelve hour days, and knowing you're only getting paid the same. No overtime. Huh. Now you see. Are you a slave? Do you think that you're a slave? 
I mean, if you think that you're a freaking slave, comment below. Let me know. Am I wrong? I'm pretty sure most of you are, are freaking stuck in that trap. Prove me wrong. Okay. Let's move on. So basically, in, in your workplace, mo most of you will probably know by now is you get emails. You know, emails. You either get emails, you answer emails, you have meetings. Emails, meetings. Uh, you, you talk to the executives, you talk to your team leaders, you talk to your supervisors, you... You, you know, you're, you're, you're doing manual work, you're lifting, you're opening boxes, you're cutting boxes, you're moving pallet jacks, you're, you know, you're, you're driving the forklift or whatnot. Whatever your role is, whatever your role is, you've got to ask yourself this one question. Are you adding any value at all to your community and society at large? Is you driving that forklift adding any value? Any value at all? Are you adding any value by opening up that email, replying to it, and sending it away? Is it saving anybody? Is it improving anyone's lives? Is it making you fulfilled? Are you happy doing, doing what you're doing? You know? Is what you are doing adding any value to society whatsoever? Now, a lot, now, a lot of you will lie to yourselves. A lot of you will lie to yourself. You will say, well, I'm opening up this email because it's a very important email. You know, this email could, it could, it could be worth, you know, uh, like $50,000, like deals. You know, I'm opening up deals. I've got to reply to these deals, you know, or I have to open up this email, you know, or else the, um, the guy above, like my, like, like my boss, he's expecting the email. He's expecting me to reply to this, to that. He's asking me this. He's asking me that. Good. That's good. But the question still stands. Are you are you answering the email and sending it, reply, like opening the email, replying to the email and sending the email? Is it adding any value to society whatsoever? Or are you just doing it because your, your work demands it and you have to do it? You have to do it. Huh. Fair question. Now let me give you another example. Let me give you another example from my experience. All right, I see no value in unpacking, repackaging, and sending out trinkets and basically cloth to another human being who I have no connection to. And, and what do I mean by that? All right, let's just say you work in retail, right? You work in retail, your, your job is to basically grab items, fulfilling items, like f fulfilling orders. If a customer orders shoes, clothes, trinkets, watches, condoms, S and M shit, lingerie, whatever, right? When you're doing that task of finding those items and then, you know, packing them and then sending them out, do you get a satisfaction of yep, I've done a good job today. I I fulfilled an order and I feel so happy. Maybe, maybe the first few orders of the day, maybe the first few orders. But after a while, you get pretty numb to it. I, I mean, because you know why you're feeling numb to it? Do you know why you get no satisfaction from, from, from doing these tasks, these medial tasks that the corporation is trying to, to make you feel good doing? Because there's no connection. There is absolutely no connection. You will have more connection by opening up a store yourself, bricks and mortar, and have customers coming in. You know, and then you can ask them, it's like, oh, how can I help you? It's like, oh, right, right, you're looking for like a pair of shoes. Oh, what size are you? You know, let me help you. You know, there's a, there, there, there's a human connection there. There is, there is a connection from you, like from you to the customer. You see them, you're talking to them, you know, you're trying to help them out. You know, th there is some sort of connection there. Sure, that connection is, is very, um, it's very short. You know, they might not even buy anything from you, but at least you're having some sort of human in interaction, right? If you're working for a big warehouse where you're fulfilling orders, but you don't see the customers, there's no connection. That is the reason why you feel so dead inside when you're doing these jobs, you know? You, 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 you've probably served, in one day, you probably serve 20 customers. 20 customers to 100 customers, you know? your job will probably serve 20 to 100 customers. And you know what, that, that's a very high rate of, of, of service. You know, you're, you're, you are providing some sort of value, but it's not the point. The point is, do you feel connected to the work that you're doing? You know, 
And let's face it, if if you're like, if you're in the industry where it's just discretionary, like discretionary consumerism, there is no connection anyway. Because what you're doing, all, all you're doing is just transferring cloth, one piece of cloth from one place to another. There, there, there is no value in that. There is no value in that because there's no connection. And the, and in life, it's all about connections and how you connect with people. You don't connect with objects. You know what I'm saying? You know, no one has ever ended their 40 hour work week by saying to themselves yes I've done society a great service and I worked my ass off to ref- to fulfill my duties to my customers whom I've never seen and will never meet in my lifetime to whom I will never get a big fat thank you from and I'm so happy for that I'm so happy for that yeah yeah I mean <laughs> I mean in my last job I've, I've, I did it for three years and trust me I had no satisfaction whatsoever oh maybe the first few days you know, like the first few days after that, I fucking, I, I probably served God knows how many customers, and honestly, I don't even know any of them. I don't even know their name. I don't even know their faces. I don't even know where they fucking live. Right? Maybe, probably, probably met one. <laughs> probably just one, but that's about it, because I bought it for myself. <laughs> Internal orders, I bought it for myself. Oh man, so let's move on. You know. You know, your corporate masters, man, they don't give a shit about you. They do not care about you. You think your your corporation gives a fuck about you? No, they don't. No, they fucking don't. You know why? It's very easy to find out. This don't don't, don't pay attention to what they say. Pay attention pay attention to what they do. You know, if they say one thing, that's great. But do they have the actions to back it up? You know, it's very easy for a corporation, for for a very, for a very big co- like corporation to say, you know, we care about you, you know, we actually care for your well being, you know, and and we're taking steps to take care of you. And then they freaking turn around and freaking they they start cutting shifts, you know, they 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 start cutting your shifts, and then you find out that they're writing stupid emails about how certain people are not hitting the numbers. Like, I thought you care about us, man. How about asking the question? How about asking the right questions of how? What can we do, you know, to help our workers perform better, instead of asking questions why aren't we performing better? You know, actions, man, actions. You got to see their actions. And I'm pretty sure it's universal. I mean, freaking most corporations are big ones, anyways. Those huge ones who hire more more than five hundred employees. You know, they're pretty heartless. And they have to be. It's understandable. They they've got a job to do, and so and so and so do, and so do their workers. So they have to be. They they can't accommodate everybody. They can't accommodate everybody. What I'm trying to highlight is. Is because they try to accommodate everybody. They have to be heartless. They have to be ruthless as possible to make sure that that the machine is running properly, because their jobs depend on it. And so in their way, when they are trying to make the machine more efficient, you are in the firing line. And in doing so, they don't give a fuck about you. And let's put it this way, man. If, if you were to drop dead today, if you were to drop dead at your workplace today, surely your workplace would just go cry boo-hoo. It was like, oh, God, oh, no, he's dead. Oh, she's dead. She's dead. It was so sad. And the best they would do, I reckon the best they would do you know, they probably send everybody home or some bullshit like that. They'll send everybody home and then don't come in the next day. You know, they'll probably mourn you for 36 hours and then life goes on afterwards. They'll reopen it. They'll they'll reopen the fucking factory, the sweatshop, and then, I don't know, you keep going. It'll just keep on rolling. It does not not stop. Businesses do not stop. Business must go on, you know. And, he, and here's the worst part. They'll probably replace you the next day. How about that? They don't even keep that workstation of yours vacant for you. Someone's got to take that station. Or someone's got to take your equipment, and then they just keep going. It's, they're heartless. It's a corporation. Corporations do not have hearts. Sure, it's run by people, but there's no beating heart there. You know? And like I said, they care about, they, they only care about your performance. You know? How much productivity they can get out of you. You know, and so they pay you a salary and a wage in return. And in return, you're giving up 
pretty much your freedom, your eight hours every day. And trust me, those time is precious, man. Time is the most precious thing that we have as human beings. You can waste money, man. You can waste money. You can th- you can waste a lot of things. You know, you can throw away money. You can waste. I mean, your nails will grow back. If you cut your nails, it will grow back. You cut your hair, it will grow back. It will come back. You know, you lose your dignity, you can get back your dignity. <laughs> you know, you can get back your dignity. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can get back in life. You know, you can get your uh, get that person back. You know, you had a fight. You know, you you give your friends a call, and you know, you, like you sort things out. You know. You can probably get your friends back, but time, no, 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 no. Time is very precious. Once time passes, it's gone. You you do not get it back. You know, no one has ever said yes. We got to- we got yesterday back. It's great news. Really, you got yesterday back. What does that mean? The past is the past. Past is gone. Past is it is past you. That's why they call it the past. You ain't getting time back, man. Once you t- wait, once you waste your time. You waste your time, like you waste your, like your life. That's it. You ain't getting it back. So time is is the most precious thing. In life, you have to, to decide what you want to do with your time, and you gotta ask yourself: Is me working at this organization worth my time? You know, am I doing the things that I want? Do I want to be here? Should 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 I be somewhere else with my loved ones? Should I start my own business? Should I think of, think about myself, like like for like for eight hours instead of thinking for the company? Because if you're inside the company working, you're thinking about them for eight hours. You ain't thinking about yourself. They might brainwash you into thinking that you like you're working for yourself. You're not. You're working for them. You're trading your time for their money. And that's the tragedy of, of it all. That most of you will not will not see this. Most of you are not conscious enough to see this. That you're wasting eight hours every day for a corporation who does not give a fuck about you. They don't care what you think. They don't give a shit what happens to you after you leave. They don't care about your family. They don't care about your country. They don't care about you. Nobody. Companies do not care about anything. They are there to sustain themselves and to enrich themselves, to enrich whoever owns that company. And they can easily say, "Oh, you are a part of the company. You are, a, you know, we work together to achieve goals." Fuck that. Fuck that noise. Fuck that noise. Fuck that noise. You are not you are a part of the company, but you you are you are their slaves. You're a part of the empire. And empires have slaves. You are their wage slaves. Now money can be infinite. Money can be money can be infinite. You can have unlimited amount of money. There, there is so much money out there that you can't get them all. I don't care what anybody says. Alright? There is so much money out there, you can't get it all in your lifetime. While while time is f- is fleeting, once time once time passes, you ain't getting it back. You know, we sell our time for money. Some of us have have you know have made have been made to think that time is all we have, but this is not true. We have sk- we have, we have skills. We have we have things to live for. You know, we have dreams. We have goals. You know, we have goals. And we should use those times to try and find out what it is that makes us tick, makes us fulfilled. And we need time to do that. It's just a tragedy that we're wasting eight hours every day working for something, working at a place where we don't want to be instead of using those those hours to find out what it is we are meant to meant to be and meant to do. You know, we human beings we are capable of doing amazing things with our lives. 
but it's not in the best interest of corporations to encourage that. Because if, you're, because if you are working on yourself, if you're working on yourself, you're not working for the company. You're not working for the corporations. It's not in their best interest like for them to do that, to let you do that. I mean, try it. Give it a go. Give it a go. Give it a go. Go to your workplace and ask them, can I take three days off to take a uh, self-improvement course? Just three days. Do you think they're going to let you? You need, a, you, like, you need a very good excuse to have those three days off. Very good excuse. And most likely, you won't even use that excuse. You can't even be truthful to your corporation. If you tell your corporation that, that you're going to some seminar that will, imp that, that will you know, teach you how to improve your life, they'll, they'll tell you no. Ah, but you have to lie. You have to lie. You, you have to lie to your corporation. You have to lie to your freaking workplace. You have to tell them, look, man, I've got, like, I need three days off. Uh, you know, I'm mentally drained. And I need the three days off. They're like, all right, mate. We care for you know, we care about your well being, for your mental well being. Take those three days off, like like three days off. Yeah, the fact that you got to lie, you know, and how and how often do you guys chuck sickies? Who whoever tells the truth when chucking a sickie? No one. No one ever tells the truth. We all tell lies. We have to lie to 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 our to our workplaces. We all do. You know, we all, have, we all have to like, we can't be honest about it. You know, we are capable of, of doing amazing things, but but we can't do it if, if businesses are stopping us from doing it. Actually, let's go to the absolute extreme. Let's just say you want to take a whole week off. Take a whole week off. Like, you really think they'll let you take a whole week off? No. No, they won't. Because it is not in the best interest for businesses to give you like a week off. If you, if you take a week off, they have to find someone to replace you. And they don't want that. They want you to be. They, they want you to be a part of their goddamn machine. And if you're a casual worker, you can't afford to take a week off anyway. Because one week. That's that's easily nine hundred bucks. You know, with that type of money, you. you Without that hundred dollars, you probably can't even make rent, or some shit like that. So you can't take a week off anyway. So basically, the corporations have have, have they, they trap you. They put you in a situation where there is no getting out. I mean, you can't quit. But who wants to do that? Not until you're ready. Yeah. You see, they want you to trade your time. For their money that's the trade that's the trade but they but they also see you as a means to an endless end there is no end in the work you know you have a let's say you have a task every single day you know they pay you so basically you're doing the same thing every freaking day for for paper for money for a wage for a salary I, I mean, ask me, actually, i ask you this. Let me ask you a question, right? If you were to get paid in some way, would you rather get paid doing what you like or doing what you, you find is very boring? As in boring, as in your your mind is numb. It's It's numb. Let me ask you this. While you're working, do you... Have a tendency to daydream. Yes. The reason why you're daydreaming is because your mind, your brain is probably is, is thinking, "Fuck this. This is boring as hell." All right. There are better things to do than to, than the task at hand. Let's daydream. You know, your brain it's constantly on. You can't turn it off. You can't turn it off. If your brain is getting bored, it's gonna daydream. Now, honestly, if you're gonna work, wouldn't it be better if you're more engaged with what the hell that you are doing? Isn't it better to be more engaged and get paid doing so? You know? So ask yourself this question 
Would I rather be doing what I want to do or doing the things that I have to do? And mind you, doing, doing what you have to do, you know, you have to do it to make the money. That's, that's the deal. You don't want to do it, but you have to. But know this, there's no end to your work. There's always the next order. There's always the next customer. There's always the next email. There's always the next palette. There's always the next job to do. There's no end. You can't win. You can't win because the, you can't win because the company their goal is not to win. Their goal is to make money. The sole purpose of a corporation is to make money. It's not it's not a goal worth chasing because if all you chase is money and growth, there's no room for compassion there's no room for integrity there's no room for for truth companies exist because they exist there is a market out there and then they're serving that market but you gotta ask yourself is it adding value to your community you know i mean if a company builds bridges hey bridges you know high en like engineers and these guys are fully engaged in what they're doing you can't daydream about while being an engineer that's dangerous so if you want to be an engineer you got to like being an engineer you cannot like it i mean that's scary if you're if you if you are an engineer and you don't like what you're doing mate you should leave <laughs> don't be, don't become an engineer man if you don't like being bridges don't build bridges fuck God damn, you might kill somebody. I mean, the bridge might, fall, might collapse and you kill millions of people, right? But an engineering company will, will build bridges. That's adding value to, your, to our society. If you work in, let's say, like a power station, like a nuclear power station, yeah, sure, nuclear, nuclear power, you know, radiation and shit, you might grow fucking three arms, three arms, three legs, two penises, for butt cheeks, who knows, right? But you're providing energy for your community. So what you're doing is, is you know, you're, you're providing a lot of value to your community. So you got to ask yourself, is the company that I'm working for adding any value whatsoever? Right? If you're going to be a wage slave, you might as well be a wage slave to a company that, that you find is contributing some way to your community. Now, honestly, the, the upside of, of earning a wage or a salary is, is money. You don't have to do much. <laughs> you don't have to do much. You don't have to think. You, it, it's, it's pretty much, it's, it's just set, you know. If you're going to make 1500 in a week, you're going to make 1500 a week, right? Or there's a potential to earn 1500 a week, right? You're set. You know, it's an exact number. You can you can aim for that number every single week and it will be in your bank account no matter what, right? But the problem with, with a wage or a salary is it's not scalable. You can't scale it. You can't make more of it. You can't earn any more. There's a ceiling. In your, corp in your corporation right now, in the business that you're working right now, there is a ceiling. You, you can't earn a million dollars an hour. You can't earn even... Three hundred thousand dollars an hour. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm throwing ridiculous numbers, but you know what I mean. It's not scalable. The, I reckon the max that you will make in the company right now, if you were to make it all the way to the very top, to the CEO, if you make it to to, to a CEO, I I'm pretty sure your your salary will be, or, or like your salary will be a million, two million dollars max. Three million, actually five million. Let's just say five million. If the company, you know, like, I'm just gonna throw a million. All right, I, I, I know, I know, some freaking CEOs earn a lot more than that, and you know, they're greedy bastards. They're fucking greedy as fuck. But, but you know, let's just give a rough number here. Let's just say at your company, the CEO earns three million dollars. Three million dollars, and you know, he's a slave too. He's he's he he is just as much a salary slave as you. He ain't gonna earn any more than that. Even with bonuses, let's say four million dollars tops. Four million dollars. That's it. 
You can't earn any more than that. You want to earn more? You got to work somewhere else. You got to work at a bigger company who's willing to pay you 5 million, 10 million. But even they have ceilings. Even they have ceilings. It's not scalable. You can't go up to your business right now. Like you can't go up to your employee right now and wait, employer right now and ask him, okay, I want to earn a million dollars right now. Man, your business will tell you, the place that you're working for will probably tell you to get lost. Ain't gonna happen. So why be a slave? Why not just risk it all and and start a business? Might as well. There's no cap. No one's gonna cap your earnings if you if you run a business. I mean, that's an idea too. I, mean, I haven't run a business yet, but freaking like from what I've seen and heard, right? There's no cap. You can pay yourself whatever you want. You can pay yourself a buck if you want. There's no ceiling. It's infinite. I mean, yeah. So what's the moral of all of this? All right. Is there a solution to the wage slavery phenomenon? Yes, there is a solution. Honestly, I should change this channel to gen general awareness podcast. You know, just change it to general awareness podcast instead of general life because it's all about awareness. It's it's always been about awareness. That's the only advice. That, that's the one advice I can give to anyone who's who wants to escape the rat race. The is the 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 subconscious slavery that we are in that, that, that we are in right now i mean you got to be aware first you have to be willing to 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 swallow that that red pill if it if it makes any sense you know like in the matrix um morpheus offered neo two pills you know the blue pill you can go back to your normal normal life and you know you just continue to be whatever it is that you were that you were or take the red pill and and all, you, all, all the truths will, will be revealed to you, but you got to decide what you want to do with that truth. So in a way, if you realize that you're, you are a wage slave and it affects you, then you have the right to, to, ch to change that. So find a way to change your situation. So you can change by, I don't know, quit. You can quit your job, you know, take up painting, something like that. It might not pay, but but that's freedom for you. That's what freedom is. Freedom is is pretty much um, you got to take responsibility for yourself. You, you got to find find a way. That's what freedom is. You know. And if you want to be a, a, like a wage slave, I mean that's on you. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but but. The, the, the truth is in the pudding. Just be aware that you know the company they don't care what you think. You know you, you they don't care about you. And honestly, if if you realize that your company just doesn't care about you, why are you even there? <laughs> why are you even there? You know it's like being in an abusive relationship. If you know that the person your partner doesn't give a shit about you, why are you with them? So why are you with the company? What just because they, they pay your bills? What you stick you just you're sticking with someone because they give you good sex? Come on. You know. These things are very similar. It's 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 very similar. So you have to find the way. I mean, you can start by quitting. You know, when you quit, you're free, and now you got eight hours. You know what? Spend that time with your loved ones. Catch up with some people, you know, have new connections, catch up with your parents because most likely they are getting old and they won't be around for long. You know, your spouse, maybe, you know, spend more time with your spouse, make, make it up to that person. Come on, man. Come on, guys. You, you guys are sharing your lives together. So spend more quality time, time with each other, you know, make, make it up to your spouse. Maybe the last few years you've been, a, you know, you've been away at work for so long, and 
and you taking your spouse for granted. You know, make it up to them. If they love you, they'll understand. If you explain, if you explain the, the like the situation, they'll understand. If they're a good spouse, they'll understand. And lastly, your kids. You know, don't you want to watch them grow up? For fuck's sake, they're your kids. They will love you more if you're around more often, and they will love you regardless if 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 you're jobless or not. They're your kids. You know, kids are young; they don't know anything. I'm just saying, if if they're like under ten, you know, and they probably and they'll love you more for it. You know, spend more time. Your kids want to hang around with you as well. They want to see you. You know, don't you want to give them a hug? You know, three times a day instead of one when you come home. If you don't do it for your kids, if you if, 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 wait, if you don't do it for yourself, you know, to you know, if you don't do it for yourself, like to unshackle yourself, be a little, do do it at least for your family, for your loved ones, and see how you go.